Hey guys, this is Lex from What the Craft with another super quick project. This one is so quick it's almost stupid. If you're like me, you're forever losing your scissors or forgetting to bring them with you when you sit down at the sewing machine. So I came up with an easy solution. I strung a pair of small thread scissors onto a chain so I can wear my scissors as a necklace. For a ridiculously easy version, you can get a ball chain, which requires no extra tools because the closure is built in. You just thread one end of the chain through one of the finger holes and viola! A handy dandy pair of scissors you can wear around your neck. And a spiffy iridescent unicorn shape is a major bonus. You can also make your chain from scratch, and here's how to do that. Step one, get yourself about 25 inches of your chain of choice. Chain comes in all kinds of colors, sizes, different link types, so don't be afraid to get wacky. And if you're wondering why I chose 25 inches for the length, there's a very good reason for that. It is both large enough to go around my big fat head and long enough that I can just lift the scissors and trim whatever I'm working on. If you make the chain too short, you'll have to lean in and give whatever you're cutting a kiss. and That's just annoying. If you're cutting the chain from a longer piece or a spool like this, all you have to do is measure out the length, pick out one of the teeny tiny links, twist it open with some jewelry pliers, and bam, a nice clean length of chain. The next step is to prepare the findings. Findings are what we call the little bits and bobs that go into making jewelry. You will need two jump rings and a clasp. I am using a lobster clasp. So here's a little tip if you're new to jewelry making. If you're like me, you take a look at this jump ring and figure the easiest way to get it open would be to just pull it apart like so. The problem with pulling it apart is that it becomes very awkward to get the loop closed again. You'll often end up with a persistent gap between the two ends that doesn't seem very big, but it can open more as you wear the necklace and eventually become wide enough to let the chain slip out and then your necklace breaks. Bummer. There's got to be a better way, and there is. Instead of pulling the loop open, twist it open. You're basically pulling toward yourself with one set of pliers and pushing away from yourself with the other. See how that works? And since we're not pulling those ends apart, when it's time to close the jump ring again, you just twist back the other way. And the two ends of the loop should still be in pretty much the same position, snugged right up to one another. I used to have huge problems with my jump rings falling off over time because I was pulling the ends apart and never getting them all the way back together. That really has not been a problem for me since I started twisting the ends open instead. Next, now that the ring is open, attach it to one end of your chain and then close the loop again. Ta-da! Repeat that step with the other end of the chain, but before you close the jump ring on this side, pop the clasp on there as well. Now we close a jump ring, thread one end of the chain through one of the finger holes, fasten the clasp, and hot diggity dog, our necklace is complete. If you've got a sewing, quilting, or needlework enthusiast in your life, I think a fancy pair of thread scissors strung on a nice chain would make a lovely gift. I hope you found this tip video helpful, and if you did, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on my next tutorial. If you have a tip of your own, leave it in the comments below. And be sure to visit whatthecraft.com for more crafty tips, tutorials, and kick-ass sewing patterns.